Good evening. Thank you for making the time for us tonight. This is The Big Story and I'm Yvonne Okwara Matole. Now tonight, learning in public universities remains at a standstill as the lecturer strike enters its second month. The University Academic Staff Union blames the government for failing to complete negotiations and seal the 2017-2021 collective bargaining agreement. The Dons have defied a court order issued on the 16th of March that called off the industrial action which began in the first week of March. The Employment and Labor Relations Court Judge Onesmas Macau declared the strike unlawful and unprotected. He ordered vice chancellors and universities to present a counter proposal for that CBA to the Labor Cabinet Secretary within 30 days. Now that period has not elapsed, but was has upheld its strike saying the court should have been specific and indicated whether Uasu and the government should engage in negotiations or conciliation. Meanwhile, the biggest uh, stakeholders, that's the students in the affected universities, continue to bear the brunt, some having to be on campus for at least two years longer than their courses require. wafanyikazi wa vyo viku peke yao ndia hawaja pata kitu kutokana na mkataba wa 2017-2021 when a professor is working at the university of Nairobi here formulating uh, concepts and theories who is this at SRC that can evaluate a professor we can't continue like that is we actually have learners and students in these universities right and they come in knowing full well that they have applied for a course that takes four years right and I think it's really unfortunate that they end up spending six years in, at university because of the number of strikes yeah, um, uh, that, that we experience. Yeah? And so all of us have to be mindful of that. Uh, that some, sometimes these students come out of university too old to even begin the career that they wanted to start. And so we want to make sure that that becomes a thing of the past. That students go to university for a four-year course. Within those four years, they complete it and they join the the job market. That there is the Cabinet Secretary for Education, Ambassador Amina Mohamed, with us on the show tonight to discuss this is the Uwasu National Organizing Secretary, Muiga Rugara. We also have with us Robinson Asman, who is a student leader from the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Also tonight, we'll be having another student's voice from Elder. It will be hearing from Bridget Siante, who is in charge of co-curricular activities at Moy University. She will be joining us in just a short while. But first, let's speak to our lead reporter on the show tonight, and that's Sophia Wanuna. Uh, Sophia is uh, live with us from the Central Business District. Good evening, Sophia. The public university education has been in turmoil for the last year or so. What's been going on? Good evening, Yvonne. Yes, quite a year it has been tumultuous for the students, especially, as you said, the most affected stakeholders. And as far as this industrial action that we've witnessed, uh, now fourth one in a span of one year. And just to go back to what we saw last year, three of them, and at the time it was contestation around the 2013 and 2017 collective gaining agreement. And initial, after the first strike, it was signed. Uh, fast strike, I beg your pardon, that uh, agreement was signed. However, then issues arose about its implementation with the government being accused of not meeting its end of the bargain that led to the subsequent strikes. However, the first one, March, uh, from January to March of last year, was the longest one yet we've seen in this past year, three months, that's about 54 days it was that the Dons uh, downed their tools. And... Um, over their salaries and their increments in that and house allowances as well. And here we are yet again, another uh, teachers, or if you like lecturers, I beg your pardon, strike this one, uh, getting into its second month. And the uh, CS, uh, Education, Amina Mohammed saying that there needs to be engagement uh, that the lecturers need to be able to sit down and give more time. However, the lecturers argue they have time and again given uh, this extra extensions and as far as talks are concerned, uh, but they're not bearing any fruit that the ministry has not been keeping its end of the bargain. But perhaps more telling, Yvonne, of what has led 
uh, to this standoff with the sides and the various uh, stakeholders that are involved is what uh, CS Treasury told the Committee on Education in the Senate. And he said it was a court ruling last year that stopped a job evaluation by the Salaries and Remuneration Commission that has made it impossible for these negotiations to go on, arguing there is no basis for talks because this evaluation was to give a structure to it, was to give a starting point and give an idea of on what basis then uh, they would be remunerated. However, the teachers successful in that August uh, court hearing, uh, the Employment and Labor Relations Court, and on three uh, limbs, Yvonne, on one, the court finding that Uwasu was not involved by the SRC in coming with the new reviews and uh, salaries and remuneration for the various job groups. Another finding in the ruling that was given is that SRC did not put into consideration the academic qualification of the teaching staff. One of the arguments that counsel for Uwasu at the time argued successfully so was that the formula that had been arrived on by the SRC favored the administrative wing, if you like, of uh, the universities, public universities, and not the teaching uh, staff, uh, saying that more work lies with the teaching staff and that then this formula that had been picked from another system was not putting into consideration the realities in the Kenya's higher education public uh, system. So in those three counts, the SRC job evaluation was stopped and the CS uh, Treasury has argued there is there can be no meaningful conversation going forward up until there is an evaluation that allows them to be able to move forward with a structure that can guide that kind of conversation. He also raised concerns around the double salaries. He says some of the lecturers in these public institutions are enjoying saying they're raking in two salaries. On one hand, they're those that are teaching in the self-sponsored programs and the regular programs, saying that that should be harmonized. But then again, there has to be this coming together and the hard stance that has been taken over by the lecturers must come uh, to an end. So Yvonne, a lot of back and forth that has been witnessed, but earlier we heard uh, from the Uwasu leadership, they demonstrated in the city, had to be tear gassed away from Harambe Avenue as they sought to serve their petition. The Uwasu chair is saying that one, the CS uh, education amina is in the wrong ministry, two, saying that this will be the longest strike they will see. Yvonne. Yes, uh, so let's talk about the implications of all of this. Uh, you know, strike is in its second month. It's, uh, as you have rightly put it, not the first we're seeing in 12 months. You know, the implication, bigger picture? The bigger picture, if only have 31 public universities in the country, an estimated 600,000 students are being affected by this. The suffering you can imagine these students are going through. You expect to finish uh, studies at a period of, say, four years or whatever time. And with uh, strikes in one year, that has significantly impacted, first, the timelines they have to stay in school, the resources as well that have been wasted in this. But for sure, one of the biggest things we've seen is even students taking to social media, some even writing letters to the president pleading with him to take action and ensure that this matter is expeditiously worked on and not the kind of knee-jerk reactions we see just to get uh, the lecturers back to school because we've seen they are adamant when they, even after ending strikes, they deem their issues have not been sufficiently addressed. They go right back to the streets. So what is it it will take to uh, once and for all fix the problems that are ailing the higher education public uh, sector in the country is the biggest uh, concern, but the students definitely won the worst affected, and they've been talking about the struggle. And even tonight, we'll hear from one of the students' leaders and the other one that we have as well of some of the experiences they are going through. Earlier today, the Kenyatta University issuing a notice that the 2,000 students who usually continue with their learning over the holidays that has been postponed. Why? There are no lecturers. Also, we saw the, uh, the University of Nairobi Senate uh, coming to the decision that the lecturers that are on strike, because there are those actually who are still teaching UON, saying there are some departments that learning is still ongoing, but those that are on strike, their salaries for the month of March will be withheld. But that is a sentiment or a decision that's been 
uh, not taken seriously, if you like, uh, by Wasu, who argue when they reach a return to work formula, part of that will have to be those salaries that are being withheld now for the striking dawns to, in fact, be paid. So at the end of the day, Yvonne, the students, the learners, the biggest afflicted and affected by this strike. Indeed. Thank you, Sophia Wanuna, for uh, laying the land for us with this uh, story tonight. Remember, the strike is in its second month now. So let's uh, get straight into the conversation tonight. Um, I already introduced you to my guests. Let's start off with the Wasu National Organizing Secretary, Muiga Rugara. Uh, Muiga, good evening. So the court declared your strike unlawful and unprotected, and uh, the government, or rather the universities, were given 30 days to present a counter-proposal. That 30 days has not elapsed. Why have you not given that process time before um, declaring, carrying on with your strike? Uh, first of all, Yvonne, the only one thing that I would like to bring into the picture is that the only method that you are given to agitate for your lights after all the boardroom and the internal mechanisms are failed is to go on strike. Number two is that uh, once the court gave, uh, gave out those orders, we filed the orders uh, 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 unfair to the union, and the only legal method that is left is to apply for the stay of those orders. We are in court as we are talking today, and the ruling will be made on Friday 6th this week to determine whether the judge will stay his orders for purposes of for, for purposes of us, seeking uh, orders that are going to complete this process. One of the reasons we want these orders to be comprehensive so that we don't want to call off the strike and again call back the strike because the orders only required the employer to give a counter offer within 30 days. The problem with that is that if the employer gives a counter offer on 16th uh, April when the 30 days are ending, and, and if that counter offer only have zero offer, because even zero is a figure, on 17th April, when we are going back to court, we will have nothing to show because we have just been given a counter offer, and the employer will say they have obeyed the court order. We have gone but, back to court to apply for stay of those orders so that we can seek a, a, clear, um, a clear path for, the, for this CBA to be negotiated, signed, and they registered in court and finally implemented. We don't want to call another strike in the next four years from this one. We only want to have one strike that is going to solve all our problems, and that's all. All right. I'd like us to listen to the students now. Alan Makudiembo on Twitter says, I have really lost hope in this academic year. I am due to go for the industrial attachment from mid-May. What next? Only the government of Kenya knows. Robinson Asman, who's uh, from the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. How has this strike affected uh, your studies and those of your colleagues? Uh, thank you, Yvonne. It cannot be gainsaid that uh, the students are suffering the biggest brunt of this standoff between uh, Wasu and uh, the government. And uh, it's been long overdue since uh, we, we, we have really been waiting to find a long-lasting solution to this. Right now, a big chunk of students, especially from my university, are at home. The university is uh, deserted simply because there is a huge standoff that should have been sold long time ago by the government and Uwasu. And uh, it, is, uh, it is high time that these two parties come and sit down together and realize that we are the biggest stakeholders in these uh, institutions of higher learning. Uh, for long, they have looked at us like um, uh, two bulls or two elephants are fighting and the grass is suffering and looking at us like we are the grass, but it should end. We want, to, we want to make it clear to the government and, and uh, clear to Uwasu that we are suffering a lot right now. Uh, the biggest predicament in Kenya right now is the idle youth. The, uh, the president, while he was campaigning to be president, he assured the youth and even he rallied support from the youth that he wanted to uh, make life better for the youth. But in campus, we are the youth and we are the ones who are going to drive this country's agenda forward. The big four plan, we are the ones who are going to drive it. But if you keep quiet con uh, continuously about this turn of leaving the cabinet secretary only to handle this problem, I do not want to say that the cabinet, the cabinet secretary is not in a position to handle the problem. But if at all she has good faith and she's able to handle this uh, standoff between 
Wasu and the government, uh -huh. it should have been done a long time ago. Okay, so you believe this falls squarely with the Cabinet Secretary for Education? No, I, I wouldn't want to say that it falls squarely on them. Uh -huh. uh, there, is no, there is no saint in this standoff. Both Wasu and the government are both at fault. And I want to say that uh, Wasu, if the lecturers had good faith, had good faith for the students, they would have already sought a clear instruction, a clear uh, uh, solution to this uh, problem long time ago because okay. they, they cannot keep on going on, uh, going on strike at the peril of us, the students, because right. we are the ones who are suffering directly. Okay, we will come back and also engage Bridget Siente, who is uh, live for us in Eldred. Ladies and gentlemen, stay with me on the show tonight. When we come back, we'll be talking solutions. As Robinson says, um, that everybody needs to get down to the negotiating table. Students continue to suffer. We'll be hearing more from my guests and from you. Please use the hashtag, The Big Story. I'm tracking your feedback and we'll incorporate it into the show when we return.